This is a 2D Minecraft clone. Are you sure about that? Or well, technically, it's a game played on a 2D slice in a three-dimensional world, just like the game Fess. This game fascinates me. How did the programmers achieve 2D slash 3D physics? I wanted to figure out how that works, and this is the result of spending a week trying to build that. I started programming, and like a day later, I had this small demo. These blocks didn't make me think of the game Fess. They reminded me of Minecraft. Now, this idea excited me a lot because I haven't seen any game do anything like like this, a breakable world played on a 2D slice in the 3D world. My motivation skyrocketed. I programmed like I've never programmed before. I had to learn the secrets of how you program such a weird world simulation before I expose the secrets of how this works. I'm gonna give this game to a friend and see what he thinks about it. Hello. Hello. Hey Smoothiebuns, do you wanna try a game I made? Absolutely, send it over. Hey. Oh no, is this another Minecraft clone? That's cool dog, and it's 2D, that's nice, but I think it's gonna need a little bit more spice. I mean, yeah sure, I can make a tiny house, get up in a desk and like my name was Mickey Mouse. And I'll admit, it's pretty fun to jump around, busting blocks, making towers out of all these cobble rocks, but hey, I got a question about the two dimensions, I'm wondering if there's something else you forgot to mention. Smoothie bots, isn't here, I'm about to blow your mind, try to it tappy tappy on the arrow keys, now! I tapped on the arrow keys, <laughs> Okay, another dimension, that's a pretty cool invention And my brain is tripping, trying to comprehend it Did I mention that it's super effective? Gives a new perspective, I wanna see the code like a computer detective So could you, could you please explain to me how you did this? Check out Smoothie Buns for smoother buns. Behind the scenes, this is a fully three-dimensional game, but what makes it look 2D is the fact that I'm using an orthographic camera. If I move the player back and forth, the player doesn't appear to move at all. This is awesome because we can teleport the player on the Z axis and it visually looks like you didn't move anywhere, yet behind the scenes, you actually moved very far away. Now, rotating the dimension in place, it visually makes sense, but if we step onto another block, it's like the whole structure of the world is different. It can be a bit confusing for the player, but if we take a look into the 3D scene, we can more easily understand why this happens. I added this arrow so we can see the direction that the camera is looking towards. When I rotate around, we can see the slice of the world that the camera is looking at. The moment we teleport onto a block on another z-axis, we can see that the slice of the world the camera is looking at is now different when we rotate the camera. It makes perfect sense looking at this from a 3D perspective, but in 2D, this can be a bit disorienting. That is how this works visually, but programming this is a whole other story. I made a very crude 2D physics simulation. The physics happens in this 2D grid, and this grid has to be reconstructed every time you change dimension. What you're looking at is just a debug visual representation in the editor. In the code, I actually store all of the blocks in a three-dimensional array. When I want to generate the 2D physical representation, I iterate all the blocks in the world, I convert their 3D position into their 2D position in the grid, and that is easier said than done. I need to traverse the world from the viewpoint of the camera, that is what's going on right here. We have to iterate the world differently depending on the camera angle. To figure this out, I had to go into the game and look with the camera and write down the axis that I need to traverse. From this angle 0, the x-axis on the 2D grid would be positive x to the negative x. Rotate 90 degrees to this angle, now the x-axis on the 2D grid would go from negative z to positive z. This is exactly what I'm doing in the code. Now computing this 2D physical representation can be very expensive. If the array size is 256 by 256, this calculation took me longer than one second to generate. That is ridiculously slow. That was two years ago when I made this project, so let's massively increase the performance today. Instead of having a three-dimensional list with empty data, scattered all around. I decided to store everything in a hash map. Oh wait, this is not the Rust programming language, this is C-sharp. I'm using a dictionary with the 3D position of the block as a key and the block information as a value. To generate the 2D grid now, all I have to do is iterate all of the blocks that exist, instead of iterating a vector 17 million times every single frame. And now generating the 2D grid takes like one millisecond. Beautiful. Having a 2D representation of the world now, we can program the physics like any other platformer 2D game. I made a very simple implementation. I have an internal velocity value, 
add gravity to it, all the typical stuff we do. Let's say we want to figure out if the player is standing on a block. All I need to do is convert the player's 3D position into the 2D grid position. And if I go down one step, well, we can see is this block solid or not. If that's the case, we can set velocity to zero. That is pretty much all I do. Very simple. Now, how did I learn how to build all of this? Well, I found this article explaining exactly how they did this in FES. Link it down below. It's really interesting and they go a lot more in depth than I will do because they talk about things like moving platforms, which I don't even dare to think about how to implement. But it's right there in the article. So since I was making some sort of Minecraft FES Frankenstein clone, I wanted to get the Minecraft model into the game. I'm a programmer. I don't know how to do 3D modeling. UV mapping this cube to make the blocks was painful enough. So I took Polymorse's Minecraft skin grabber code he had written, which amazingly let us download skins right into the game. You can actually cosplay as your favorite Minecraft character. Uh, uh, what? Clearly this is a flawless implementation with no bugs. Great. Now let's say I wanna place a block in the world. How do I do that? Well, I just get the mouse position, convert that to the world position. I also convert that into the 2D grid position because if there is a block already there, we need to place a block right in front of it. If no block is present, we instead place it at the same depth as the player has. Since I just added a block, we need to add the physical representation into the world. So I'm regenerating the whole world every time you place a block or break one. Obviously we could do some caching of the 2D grid data Data or modifying parts of it instead of regenerating the entire world but that would require some more code so I'm just regenerating everything now to break blocks I'm doing basically the same thing get the mouse position convert it to world position get the grid position get the physics object at the grid position if we have an object all it's doing is incrementing this brokenness value and when we reach one it is broken and it is deleted I can use this brokenness value to set a float in the shader which lets me do this cool effect. The core mechanics are in the game. You can place blocks, you can break blocks, but if you think I'm gonna add crafting, you are right. But I made the most scuffed implementation you can think of. You can make planks. The UI is beautiful as you can see. I do this way too often, build a massive system programming wise, and only utilize it for one or two things. Programming. This project started because I was curious how Fest worked behind the scenes. I did successfully replicate it, goal achieved, but this was so fun to work on that I spent much more time than I thought I would. It took me about a week to make this, if we can trust my GitHub commits. And the final project is kind of a tech demo sandbox thing. I thought a dimensional shifting game where you can break and place your own blocks would be cool, but I learned that the collision is a big flaw in its current state. I didn't implement collision on the x-axis, because well, if we did, it would be really hard to traverse the world. If we compare this game to FES, in FES the world map is pretty big, and most blocks in the game does not have horizontal collision. You kind of have to experience this game to figure out why the collision is a such a hard thing to do. This is a major issue to tackle if someone wants to make a game like this. You can actually play this game in the browser on my itch.io page. Check out Smoothie Buns, check out the source code of this project down below. Bye bye bye! On the arrow keys! Mm -hmm. Okay, another dimension, that's a pretty cool invention.